Well, Arsenal and Aston Villa are both among the championship contenders, but like almost everyone else, they've been slipping up. Villa's good run came to an end at home to Chelsea. Arsenal had just two points from nine, but a 2-0 win today would put them top again. Plenty of goals here too. Our man at Highbury, John Champion. The Premiership's most prolific striker faces its meanest defence with figures playing on his mind. Ian Wright has 21 goals so far this season, but he has to be wary of reaching 21 disciplinary points. He's just found out that his sending off at Nottingham Forest last week will stand. If he's booked today, he could face a five-match ban. He needs to be on his best behaviour. Wright is one of six England internationals in the Arsenal team. Three more, Seaman, Dixon and Platt are injured. Patrick Vieira returns after suspension. Another Frenchman, Remy Gard, keeps his place. Aston Villa have been parsimonious in defence, only 17 goals conceded thanks to the efforts of Hugo Ehiog and colleagues, he's played in every match. A five-game winning streak ended against Chelsea on Boxing Day, but Villa are still unchanged. Sabo Milosevic scored both their goals when the teams drew at Villa Park in September. Jeff Winters in charge today, his name matches the weather, it is bone-chillingly cold. Four members of the Arsenal team who are playing from left to right in the dark tops are actually wearing gloves at kickoff. And the first throw goes Aston Villa's way. Arsen Wenger watching on, Arsenal's fourth manager of 1996. It has, as they say, been quite a year. Birdcamp. Still having to adjust to this role as a right wing-back, he's played as a right winger before. Vieira, this is better from Arsenal. Parler, now more central. Right, Winterburn, just crisp. Not like the day itself. Merson, guard. Bergkamp, away from Taylor, this is Bergkamp. Many players would even have got a volley on target from there. York, Milosevic, Townsend. Taylor wasn't aware of Merson's presence. Bergkamp, content to wait for support to arrive. Parler, the error outside him. Not a regular goal scorer, Ray Parler. Six goals in round about as many seasons. But that was struck firmly enough. Brian Little is looking for his team to recover from that Boxing Day home defeat by Chelsea. Milosevic. Bergkamp. And Wright's on his way. He's onside. Ian Wright. Yes! Give him an inch, and he'll take the proverbial mile. Ian Wright makes it 22 goals for the season. And from the moment he received permission to shoot on goal from a Villa defence that was almost inviting him so to do, there was no doubt that the ball was going to find the corner. Bosnich got a fingertip to it, but that was nowhere near enough. Nelson. Winterburn got a foot in. This is Bergkamp. Still Bergkamp. Now Ian Wright. Bosnich out. Right round it. Wonderful goal line clearance by Shimika. Well, you'd have wagered your last pound on Ian Wright scoring his and Arsenal's second from the moment he took it past Bosnich. But look at the ground that Shimika made up. Bergkamp. Away from Staunton. And Bergkamp forcing the save. Adams and Alan Wright going up for it. Still it's got away, bold! (laughs) 
so many chances in such a short space of time. Bergkamp with the first. And there it was a vital header from Alan Wright. Still the threat wouldn't go away. Bold just over the bar. Milosevic. Beaten by Keo. Bergkamp. Staunton. York. For once, Vieira missed out. This is Dwight York still. Taylor in the box. And has Taylor squeezed it in? No off the line by Bold. Nelson. How did Villa not score there? And Lukic getting in quite a tangle. But it was Steve Bold who saved Arsenal's bacon. Because when the cross came in from Dwight York, it looked to be Lukic's ball, but then he spilled it. It was bouncing agonisingly towards the line until Bold intervened. That's as close as Villa have come to an equaliser. Townsend. Draper. York. Away from Winterburn. Three waiting. Here's Nelson. Tackled by Vieira. Merson. And Wright in pursuit. Staunton with him. Still it's right. Well, Staunton's face would have been as red as Ian Wright's shirt had the Arsenal striker managed to put that the other side of the post. Because the onus was on Staunton to clear. Maybe Wright was using his right arm on Staunton's shoulder. Even so, it wasn't the best bit of defending. Nelson away from Winterburn. Bold and a throw in. Nelson back from Milosevic. And there's Milosevic and Arsenal were caught asleep. Savo Milosevic, who scored twice in the first meeting between the sides at Villa Park back in September, has drawn Aston Villa back onto level terms. Nelson's deep, deep cross, and this was where Arsenal really should have got hold of matters. Parler was beaten in the air by Draper, and Milosevic's finish was emphatic. Giving away to Townsend, and here's York. Three Arsenal defenders in his way, and support is slow to get up with him. Townsend. Taylor's inside the penalty area now, as well as York. But Arsenal have men back in numbers. Nelson, and Milosevic's header tipped over by Lukic. How significant is it, I wonder, that since Arsenal made their substitution, their marking at the back has gone completely to pot. Townsend with the corner. Oh, Schimmicker was up there. And buoyed by that goal, Aston Villa are now putting Arsenal under fairly heavy pressure. Schimmicker. On by Milosevic. Ehiok was waiting. Brave header by Townsend. Now Arsenal could break. Morrow. Merson screaming for it, ten yards to his right. And here is Merson. Away from Staunton, Merson! Wonderful goal! A fantastic finish by Paul Merson. for whom the calendar year 1996 has been a year of transition that may well end in triumph. For a long, long time, Merson was screaming for the ball to be delivered to his feet. It was. And just look what happened next. 
Arsenal are back in front with a goal of the highest order. Morrow's pass, he's the substitute. The change may have cost them a goal, but now it's created one. Milosevic. And York with a chance. He scored! Two goals in a minute. One to each side. And Arsenal caught cold at the back for the second time. Not the sort of defending you expect from a side seriously chasing the championship. Keogh left floundering. Lukic got a hand to it, but that wasn't enough. Dwight York's 12th goal of the season. 2-2. For all the planning that you put in, you can't legislate for moments like that. Appeals for the use of the hand, not given. This is Bergkamp. Round Storton. Oh. He's done all the hard work, Dennis Bergkamp. And he knows that having got right through almost the entire Villa defence, he should then have beaten the last man, who was Bosnich. But the speed of the attack was what took the breath away. Milosevic missed his kick. It seemed to be doing a bit of leaning, but this is Dwight York. Milosevic continues his job through the middle. York is all on his own. Off Winterburn to Nelson. York stumbled. Away by Morrow. Mercer. Now Draper. Milosevic. The chances are still coming. And that is the end of the afternoon's entertainment, which increased in quality as the game went on. Arsenal missed the chance to go back on top of the Premiership, despite the fact that they were twice ahead. Ian Wright putting them in front early on. Paul Merson restoring the lead after Milosevic had equalised for the first time for Aston Villa. Dwight York levelled for a second time for Villa. There were three goals in seven minutes at one stage. Arsenal missed the chance to go top. Aston Villa, after their defeat on Boxing Day, are back on an even keel, and they will be pleased with this away point. We were poor. We did a lot of things wrong, and uh, we talked about that at half-time sensibly. We managed to get our act together. And then, in fairness, you know, I felt we were the better side in the second half. But they would have been disappointed at 1-0 and, and I think you know we've had those sort of games when you come in for the second half you know the opposition are going to be better because they'll have, they'll have talked about it and hopefully they'll put it right and we did that today. Of course uh, we are disappointed tonight because we thought when you, we made the most difficult with 2-1 at 15 minutes before the end but it's football, we, Aston Villa reacted well and played well so we have to accept that. I think uh, the supporters today had a great game, it was uh, fantastic for the Premier League and uh, I would like to keep the positive side of our game. What changed at half-time then? Well, the gaffer just said to us, you know, we've got to be a bit more positive, and we've got to take the game to them, and, uh, and that's exactly. We needed to start uh, lively, which we did, second half, and that just seems to change, and uh, everybody just seems to get into, into the thick of things again and uh, start playing the way that we're capable of playing. Can you lift any of this veil of secrecy over what Arsene Wenger does as manager here? Just gives everybody unbelievable belief. Always positive talking and... You know, always talking positive, no negative stuff, and you know, and the training's really enjoyable, and it's just football, 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 and the lads are relishing it. And, and there's always a thriller at Arsenal. You've been in the job now for three months, full time here. Are you pleased, surprised at the the progress, the position you're in? Yes, I'm pleased because I love what I do, and I, I think uh, that the players uh, give 100% in every game. And when you're manager, I think that's very important. I feel that the team is ambitious. They want to go as far as they can, and that's for me the most important. He's a good blow. He's a great man, and you know, you know. I, I now I know why Leonardo went into when he says he went into management. You know, I'd even think about going into it now with his ideas.
Really? So Arsene Wenger is, if you like, a mentor of sorts? Yeah, I think so. You know, he's, you know, I'd have never said before he came that I'd like to get into management, but with his ideas, I'd love to do it after.